Hi everyone, this is Mahmushek and in this video I will discuss about one of the important concept of object oriented programming which is dynamic binding. Okay, so here I have written some points along with the example. So we will try to understand what is dynamic binding with the help of these examples. Okay, so now let us start our discussion with the first point. So dynamic binding is the process of linking procedure calls to a spe specific sequence of code at a runtime. Okay, and dynamic binding is also called as late binding. Okay, so uh, here what it says is dynamic binding is a process where we link the procedure calls. This is my procedure call add int add and I am passing the parameters a and b is a process of linking this procedure to its respective function or to its respective code okay at runtime okay the moment when we execute the program and then it asks the user to enter the values for these two parameters x and y okay so at a runtime the compiler will make the decision which version of the add function it needs to execute okay as you can see here there are two functions with the same name add okay but both of these functions are accepting different parameters one function is accepting parameters of integer types both are integer type parameters and another function is accepting the parameters of float type okay so now when we execute this program since there are two functions with the same name the compiler will get confused which function it needs to execute when the compiler will make a decision that which function it needs to execute whether the function with the integer parameter or the function with the float parameter okay so when it makes a decision the moment when the user enters the values for these two parameters if the user enters both of the values which are of integer okay if the user enters both integer values then compiler will come to know that it needs to execute the add function with integer parameters okay if the user enters two float values then compiler will come to know that it has to execute the function with two float parameters okay so that is that decision okay so that decision of choosing appropriate function out of these two function is made at runtime compiler is making that decision at runtime that's why it is called as dynamic binding or late binding okay so because until the program gets executed and until the user enters the values for both of these parameters compiler will never come to know that it has to execute either the function with the integer parameters or the function with the float parameter compiler will come to know only when user enters the values for these parameters if the user enters two integer values compiler will come to know that it has to execute the function with integer parameters otherwise it has to execute the function with the float parameters okay so the here the decision is is been made only when the program gets executed that is runtime okay at runtime the compiler is making decision out of these two function which function it needs to execute that is called dynamic binding okay so dynamically here the procedure calls are linked with their respective codes so this is also called as late binding okay so now let us move to the next slide okay there are two types of binding compile time binding and runtime binding example which we have seen here is an example of runtime binding because at runtime compiler is evaluating which version of the add function it needs to execute okay so all these are taking place at runtime okay so that's why it is called as runtime binding as well it is one of the type of dynamic binding which is runtime binding okay so let us see the types of dynamic binding there are two types of uh, uh, binding compile time binding and runtime binding okay so in compile time binding what happens is suppose there will be only one function with a name as add and that function is taking both integer values in that case there is no confusion for the compiler because since there is only one function and it has to execute only that function then and compiler will make the decision at the time of compilation itself that it has to execute only that one function the com at compile time only the procedure calls will get linked with their respective code because there is 
only one function okay and at the time of compilation itself compiler will know about that so that is called compile time binding it's a process of resolving the function to be associated with the function calls during the compile time compiler will resolves this problem at compile time itself okay? so it is also called as early binding okay whereas in the case of uh, uh, dynamic binding or late binding it was evaluating at runtime that's why it was called as late binding here it is called as early binding because here uh, so now the second type of binding is runtime binding okay uh, which exactly similar to whatever we discussed here in this case when we were discussing dynamic binding it is the process of resolving the function to be associated with the function calls during the runtime rather than compile time okay so at runtime the compiler is evaluating compiler is making a decision at runtime which version of the add function it needs to execute okay so that is what uh, runtime binding okay so this is uh, thing about uh, dynamic binding and the types of binding uh, compile time binding and runtime binding okay so now let us discuss the next concept of object oriented programming which is message communication okay it's one of the important concept of uh, object oriented programming okay since we are using the concept of objects here in object oriented programming so here there is a way for various objects to communicate with each other so that they can pass the data with each other they can communicate with each other okay so how they are going to communicate how objects communicate with each other so now let us discuss all these things in these points so in object oriented programming objects can communicate by sending messages to each other these messages do either of the following two x or two things okay so here in object oriented programming objects can communicate with each other by sending them messages and how they are sending messages that we'll see okay first messages may ask the object to perform a computation and return a value okay since here various objects are making communication with each other by sending messages okay so in that message an object may ask the other object to perform the computation for any calculation okay once that object performs that computation then it it has to send that output to the other object okay next they may modify the object's data changing its state or value okay and apart from performing the complex calculations and returning the value of that calculation objects may modify the data of other objects they can change its state and they can change the value of other object as well so this is how various objects in object oriented programming communicate with each other to perform a task okay so uh, so in this uh, video we saw what is dynamic binding what are the types of dynamic binding okay we came across with different terms of uh, late binding early binding so with that uh, all these things we discussed in this video and uh, also we discussed what is message communication Okay, so that's all for this video guys and uh, uh, I hope you like this video I hope you got some useful and valuable information out of this video if you like this video click on like button share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and thanks for watching